hello everyone. We are doing R programming, five minutes and ten lines. In a previous video, I'll put a link in the description, um, we described the data, where it's coming from, what's the experiment, and such. Um, and this is the research paper over here that's talking about it. <clears throat> so we have our one line of R code to read in the data. And we can look at the data here. And what we're looking for is trying to figure out genes that behave in an interesting way according to these numbers. All right, so as a first step, I want to kind of plot the numbers here. Um, so first I want to pull out a some particular row. In R, if you have a table uh, called a data frame here, there's square brackets to get inside the table, and then you give a row and then a column. Okay, so if we give one one, that should be the first row, first column right there. And we can see that over there. If I change this one to a two, that's the next column, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that starts the numbers. Um, how many numbers are there? Um, let's see. There's 32 columns in the data overall. So if I put 32, that should be the last column. And if I put 33, that's null because it, there's no 33rd. So if I go from 6 to 33, Sorry, 6 to 32. All right, that should be the first row there. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot that. I'm going to use a bar plot. Okay, um, it doesn't like that. It says it's supposed to be a matrix. If we look at, this is kind of getting into the weeds of R, so I'll just do the thing that needs to be done. Okay, so there it is, that's the first row. So is this interesting? Maybe, um, and we can see the first three are the stem cells and then we've got the day eight, uh, right, left. Let's see, I wanna, let's rearrange those. I wanna make it so we can actually read all the levels, all the labels there. Okay, so in the bar plot, was this LAS equals two. Okay, so now we could actually read those. So there's the stem cells, the three embryo samples, the day eight heart tube samples, and then we have left right ventricles. Okay, so I could do this, I could plot this for every one of the 45,000 genes, that would take a long time. Um, so instead of that, let's go back over here and look for some particular ones. Um, so these, if we read the text, these are genes that may be of interest. So I can go over here and look for these genes. Okay, so there's NKX 2.5, and that's on this row, 33,866. So if I put that in here, instead of row one, then that's what NKX 2.5 looks like. And that kind of corresponds with what is known about this gene, um, that it's an important heart gene. So pretty much once you're in the heart, it's a much higher uh, expression level than in the, than just the stem cell or the whole embryo. All right, I'm gonna wanna look at different genes here. Um, so, I'm going to, to make a function. So let's see, I'm going to look at um, plot gene is a function where I give it a row num. And then I'll do it for this 
particular gene. So what this means now is whatever, whatever row number I give there, it'll go ahead and do that. First I have to save that gene, save that function, and there's NCAX 2.5. Um, we could pick one of these other ones. I think maybe ISL1 behaves interestingly. Okay, there's two different um, there's two different rows there that correspond to that gene. Let's see. So that's, this is kind of interesting because um, it's higher in the embryo and the day eight heart tube. And then after that, during heart development, it's high in the right ventricle. That's kind of cool. So this must play an important role in the formation of the heart. But then by the time you have an adult heart, it's lower. And I think we're about at five minutes and we're at 10 lines of code. So we could play this game of looking for any one particular gene and, um, and seeing what it looks like. So things to do. Uh, what about running that for all 45,101 rows? Okay, that requires a little bit more programming. Um, other things that you would want to do is well, and, and pull out the important ones automatically. Okay, this is all possible, but we're, we're out of time, so we're not going to do it. And also, I want to keep it pretty simple here. Um, so other things that we want to do is, uh, what are the statistics? Um, so if you've done statistics, then p-values and such. All right, so there's, there's functions that we can call to get uh, more quantitative about what we're seeing here. So what, is this a real effect? That really looks like a real effect, that this gene is higher in the right ventricle than le left ventricle. Um, but can we, can we say that in terms of statistics? Yes, we can, and R can do that for us. All right, so we'll leave it at that for now. You could play with this yourself if you wanted to. We'll put all the um, we'll put the code and data in here. The data is there, so I'll put this file up. Um, there's a link to the research paper as well. Okay, now have fun.